Hey, everybody. I thought I would share with you a story called Just Me. It's very different from the stories I've shared in the past. Uh, it was published in the Moonshine Review, I'm trying to get the glare off of this so y'all can see the book cover um, from fall, winter 2016. Uh, it was written a few years ago, back before we were so dependent on social media to track people down. I mean, we were using it, but this came from a period where it wasn't quite so as involved. Also, you need to know it's set in the 1970s. So if you don't know who Ed McMahon, Johnny Carson, or Bo Derek are, you might be a little confused about it. I thought it would be appropriate to um, wear this particular shirt while reading it because my shirt says when something goes wrong in your life, just feel plot twist and move on. And that might have a little bit to do with this story too. So just me. He never comes out. I stared at Tanya, a stupor of beer, numbing my thoughts. We sat at a beat up table in my apartment, papers and textbooks spread out, the detritus of a failed study session. I know, Tanya slapped at my arm in a clumsy attempt to comfort me. Mary keeps him on a tight leash. He was Cole, a chemistry student tall, lean, with thick, dark hair and sea green eyes that made me melt. Cole dated Mary Miles, Tanya's goody-goody sorority sister. I had never met Mary Miles, but I hated her. Did you drive by his apartment? I rolled my eyes at Tanya. I see his car more than I see him. Tanya started to laugh, but cut it short when she caught my glare. She bit her lip and fought back the lingering smirk, her eyes growing distant for a few moments. Then she laughed anyway. So why don't you tell his car? What? I rubbed my face and tried to focus. How much had Tanya drunk? Tell his car how you feel. I closed my eyes and tried to imagine this. Even drunk, I had my limits. Talking to a car at midnight went a bit too far. Look. Tanya leaned towards me, write a note and put it on the car. Oh, I could make sure I didn't say something stupid that way. I jumped up, knocking my chair over and hauled my backpack up on the table. After rummaging for pen and paper, I plopped back down. What should I say? I stared at the crumpled paper ripped from a spiral notebook. What do you want to say? I shrugged. I don't know. Ask why he doesn't come out on the weekends, Tanya said. I chewed the end of the pen a moment. I guess that'll work. Dear Cole, you never come out on the weekend. Why? You need to come have fun with us. We could have a blast. And I'm just going to show you because in the printed version, you can see she actually scratches out words. So I read you the actual message as opposed to the scratched out words. I read it aloud to Tanya. You know he's with Mary. Tanya's nose wrinkled in disgust. A notion brightened my thoughts. Adding to the note, I read out loud, why don't you give someone besides Eminem a chance? Eminem, that's great. Tanya's laughter brought tears to her eyes. She really is an uptight little, should I sign it? I studied the letter with drunken pride. I thought it sounded cool, but my courage only went so far. I couldn't bring myself to write Anna at the bottom. Tanya reread the letter. Eminem, she chuckled. You don't want to sign it? I jiggled the pen between my fingers and stared at the TV. Johnny Carson leered at a scantily clad Bo Derek, Ed McMahon's bark of a laugh sounding in the background. Some women had it easy. What if he doesn't like it? I wadded up the paper. I'll see him every week in Dr. Jones's class. Wait, Tanya grabbed the paper from me, ripping the edge. Sign it anonymous. She tried to smooth the letter out. Anonymous. I shoved my hair out of my face. Nope, don't like it. Look, just write something. See how he reacts. I thought about it. If I looked like Bo Derek, this wouldn't be a problem. See how he reacts first? Tanya handed me the pen. Then tell him it's just me. She bounced in her seat. That's it, sign it, just me. We rode in Tanya's old Ford, a huge tank of a car with rust on the hood. As she turned into the apartment complex, my heart leapt into my throat. On its heels rushed the aftermath of beer and pizza. What if his car was there? What if his car wasn't there? 
but there it sat, a light blue VW bug. Somehow it fit him. What if someone sees me? My beer haze mind tried to contemplate the dangers of my actions. At this hour? Who cares? We're all drunk. Tanya nodded toward the car. Do it. I slunk down in the seat and peered out at the parking lot, twisting around to check it from all angles. Nothing moved. Inhaling like I was about to dive into the deep end, I shoved the heavy car door open, crouched down low, and scurried to the VW. Straightening enough to reach a wiper blade, I stuck the note underneath it and took a running dive back into Tanya's car. She stepped on the gas and we burst out laughing as the car's tire screeched out of there. Exhilaration surged through me. Saturday morning, I nursed a hangover and wondered whether Cole found the note. After hours of mood swings from panic to exhilaration to nausea, I drove by his apartment. The note was gone. In class on Tuesday, I watched him out of the corner of my eye, obsessed over the thrill of our shared mystery. Looking for some sign he knew, I planned future letters from just me. Since Cole parked in the same commuter lot as I did, I discovered I could tuck a note in his car door without breaking stride. Sorry you had a cold over for all break. Take some vitamin C. Just me. You should wear that green sweatshirt more often. You look hot in it. Just me. How did your midterm project go? Heard you worked hard. Come out and celebrate. Celebrate. Just me. Next time, try the butter pecan at the dairy bar. It's my favorite. Just me. Not once did we hear how we reacted to these letters. Cole's girlfriend, Mary, never mentioned them to Tanya. We hoped she didn't know. Meanwhile, I reveled in my secret relationship with Cole, hoping for some chance encounter. I ran into him at the library about a month later. We talked, but he didn't mention the letters. Probably didn't think we knew each other that well. Oh, if he only knew the familiarity I desired. The semester wore on, but Tanya received no news. I got busy with finals, went on a few dates with a guy I met in English class, and gave up espionage for the real thing. Until spring semester. My biology lab partner, Beth, had just mentioned her, chem her chemistry class, Cole's major, and just me bounded to the forefront of my thoughts. Rested from winter hibernation, she smiled and stretched. I perched on the stool next to Beth, trying to locate a non-cooperative single-celled invertebrate under the microscope. Do you know Cole? He's in my lab, Beth said. I smiled. Maybe my luck was about to improve. To encourage this thought, the pesky organism under the microscope swam into view and paused, centered on the slide. I took it as a sign. Taking my gaze from the cellular blob, I looked Beth in the eye and smiled. Want to have some fun? I knew she'd say yes. We hadn't known each other long, but I could tell Beth enjoyed excitement especially if it made a boring lab interesting. Tell Cole that just me says hi. It only took a few minutes to fill her in. Like little devils, we grinned at each other. In a way, I envied her access to Cole, but I'd settle, settle for secondhand reports. You should have been there, Beth said in our next lab. I said it while walking past him and he spun completely around on his stool and grabbed my arm. He didn't. She popped her head. He kept asking, who is it? Who is it? But I didn't tell him. The temptation to restart the letter seduced me. Even though I was dating someone, I succumbed. With Beth as my informant, just me returned. Missed you at the soccer game, just me. Have you seen any movies? I love dark places. Come join me, just me. When are you going to relax and come out on Fridays? I like the pub, just me. Beth managed to stuff the notes in Cole's books, his jacket pockets, and is always on his car. We giggled, plotted, and schemed all semester. During the first week of finals, I handed her a new note hinting at my summer plans. She tilted her head to the side. Another one this week? You're getting busy, aren't you? I shrugged. You're leaving for the summer. I bet he is too. This might be my last note until September. The next day, I stopped studying long enough to run out for a burger and ran into Cole. Hey, Anna, you eating here? I had planned to get it to go, I said. Stay, sit with me. 
I looked toward the door, but his plea drew me. Who could deny those green eyes? His first words spun my world upside down. Did I ever tell you about the letters I kept getting? My stomach hardened into a ball. My mouth went dry. I grabbed for my soda and spilled it. Uh, no, I need some napkins. Be right back. What to do? Armed with napkins, I returned to the table, vowing to listen and say nothing. Mopping up the puddle, I asked, what were you saying? Something about letters? Yeah, this girl left me love letters. He shoved a handful of fries in his mouth. I paused and wiping up my mess, so my mess, soda dripping from the napkins. Left? What happened to the notes I gave Beth this week? Yeah, he pointed to the soaked napkins. You might want to throw away those. I hurried to the trash, fighting an unease that wouldn't let me breathe. When I returned, he continued where he found the letters, his efforts to figure out who wrote them, the things this person knew, and I listened. I tried to act normal, but everything I murmured sounded phony. Huh, really? Wow. Then I asked the question. So any idea who it is? He smiled and stretched, bumping into my leg under the table. I jumped at the contact and slurped more drink. Oh, I know. Cole slid a fly, fry through a puddle of ketchup and popped it in his mouth. He chewed with relish. I held my breath, heart pounding. I thought it was this girl who lives in the same apartments as me, as me but he lifted one shoulder. It wasn't. You're sure? Yep. I'm dating the mystery girl now. What? Had Mary Miles taken credit for my hard work? Mary? My voice squeaked up an octave. Just me insisted I confess, but I swatted her aside. Nope. She found the letters and got mad. Didn't believe I didn't know who it was. We broke up. I took a bite of burger and chewed over that information. Had that been my plan? Drunk and besotted, had I really planned to break them up? My mind shined away from this turn of events and focused on the more critical. Who was impersonating just me? Sorry to hear that. Oh, it's all right. It was kind of fun figuring it out. Cole flashed another grin, his green eyes sparkling. My friends are so je jealous. That's beautiful. I gagged on my burger and started coughing. You okay? Concern crossed his face as he half rose from his seat. Grabbing a napkin, I waved him away, turned my back and spat that half chewed meat out. Beth. I rinsed my mouth with soda and swallowed, surprised at the pain swelling in my chest. Did she tell you? Cole grinned. Nope. Caught her in the act. Oh, wow. I shoved my gullible ego down before it erupted with the truth. I should have been in class, but forgot something. Caught her leaving it on my car. He laughed. You should have seen her face. Adorable. I swallowed my pain. When? About a month, I think. He screwed his face up and thought, yep, four weeks tomorrow. The smell of grease suffocated me. My stomach churned, a burp burning to escape. No wonder she questioned the extra letter the day before. So where's your green sweatshirt? I blurted out the one thing Beth never knew, my fascination with that shirt. It's a little warm for it now, he frowned. Why do you ask? Good question. I scratched at a spot on the table. Anna? I took a deep breath and raised my eyes. Just wondered. How do you know about the sweatshirt? I didn't mention it. My voice rose just above a whisper. I know. Cole sat back nodding. Are you friends with her? Were you in on this? My rebellious head bobbed yes. You know what's weird? I wore that shirt on our first date. She ordered me to change it. I promised I thought about it before I spoke. I did, but I hated how Beth benefited from my letters and lied to me. Plus, he'd worn the sweatshirt and Beth didn't get it. She didn't say you looked cute, that your eyes looked greener, that she wanted to run her hands up under it. Confusion creased Cole's brow. I leaned forward, teeth bare. That's because she didn't write the letters, Cole. He blinked at me. I wanted to shout, but managed to keep my voice low. Beth delivered them for me. She didn't write them. I did. His reaction, back straight, clenched fists, made me go cold. I glanced at the door, positive I needed to go. I wore it all the time. What? I stared at him, unsure if I'd heard correctly. After she, you, the letters, I wore that shirt all the time. My heart bled a little. His eyes looked like a scolded puppy's. You stopped for a while. Stopped? My mind struggled to keep up with his words. 
leaving the letters. I'm dating someone, I said. When I found out Beth knew you, I wrote a few more. I shrugged. For fun? Yeah. He looked at me with renewed interest and crossed his arms. Mary found one of your notes. She threw it in my face. Wait. I have to answer to his broken relationship while Beth gets to date him? I swept salt off the table. I'm sorry. He leaned on his forearms. I never expected you. I didn't know whether to be insulted or proud. So what about Beth? He dropped back against the worn wood of the booth. She lied, didn't she? I nodded to both of us. The remains of our lunch lay spread over the table, greasy wax wrappings, balled up napkins, my half-eaten burger. We both stared at it, but I don't think either of us saw it. Cole raised his head until his gaze locked with mine. I might be in love with her. That wasn't what I wanted to hear. Will you tell her? Maybe, I don't know. I wadded up my trash, of course. Guys did stupid stuff all the time. Why should Cole be different? I paused, my lunch remains balled up in my hands. So you never suspected me? No. Nope. Why? He didn't reply. Drained, disheartened, and not wanting to know his answer, I stood to leave. As I turned to walk away, he spoke again. You signed the first letter, love. I paused. No, I didn't. His nod, nod was emphatic. I wouldn't miss something like that. I still have the letters. I thought back to the night it started and groaned. I was drunk. I avoided his gaze. I'm sorry. I turned and hurried away. He didn't call me back this time. I don't recall seeing much of Cole after that. I heard he broke up with Beth and started dating someone else soon after. Sometimes, out of the blue, I think of just me wondering what Cole is doing and if he still has the letters. Maybe I'll find out next week at our 30-year class reunion. I wonder what kind of car he drives now. Me? I bought an old blue VW Beetle and restored it. I love that car. So that's just me. And um, it was a lot of fun to write. A lot different from some of the stories I've written um, so far or that you've seen. And if you want to know more about me, check out the information below this video. You can find out where my um, epic fantasy trilogy can be found, The Watchers of Mania. You can find out where my website is, how to connect with me on other parts of social media. And I also have other stories. So go back and look and see what else you might have been missing. Thanks.